Six Ages Gaming is brought to you by GamersGauntlet.net. Check them out for all your singles, sealed product, and play mats. Hey guys, welcome to another Six Sages Gaming Deck Spotlight brought to you by GamersGauntlet.net and UltimateGuard.com. This is our bonus video for the week. A lot of people are asking for it, and I kind of left it up for a vote, and I realized I probably should have just done both. Thankfully, I had the holiday to record this, so here it is. Blazer Knights. I know that a lot of people might take this as being a dead horse, but I think it's really important to cover knowing that we're going to be getting more Knights of the Round Table support in the next set, and it plays on a very different angle than a deck that's, you know, like the Mono Ride decks we used to see, or even the Necrolance decks, which want to just, you know, suit up this Necrolance and just keep swinging forever, 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 and that, fortunately or unfortunately, however you want to look at it, they even gained the last drop next set, I believe is the name of the card, so they're just going to be playing effectively eight land slots in a deck if they so choose. What I really like about this deck is it adds Percival. Not only is this a way to, you know, protect our knights in a couple different combat ways, or it lets us, you know, banish it, protect Blazer if we really need to, but it allows us to play cards like Gwen and Bedivere, and we can tutor for, or not, sorry, not tutor for them, but we can look at the top five cards of our deck for them, and they're going to be really, really good in certain matchups. Now, Bedivere especially, if your opponent's playing Arthur, you, some, you in one axis go from, hey, I really need to draw into this Bedivere, where, hey, I need to play these Percivals, and it's going to, you know, significantly increase my chances of being able to see it. So, when we're adding more Knights to the Round Table in the next set, and I'm sure we haven't seen all of them yet, there's something to be said about having Percival and being able to play that turn one, looking at the top X amount of cards of your deck, being able to pick a Regalia or Knights of the Round Table from them, and then play that in your turn two. With this deck especially, you can play Lancelot turn two, Gwen turn two, and I'm pretty sure off the top of my head there's another Knight of the Round Table that's a two drop in the next set. I can't remember off the top of my head. But it gives you a lot, a lot of options, so... I think even if it's, this is just a shell to use going forward, again, I mentioned on Facebook, it's a mix of an AG, I think it was an uh, ARG Top 8 Circuit Series event and also an Italy AGP or Masters Qualifier event. It's kind of like, the, I took what I liked out of both decks and put them together and uh, I got to play a couple games with it. It did work kind of well. Uh, the games I lost, it was when I'm playing against uh, Daryl is when I just didn't see my Bedivere to kill their Arthur, so that's going to happen. But... First we'll talk about the ruler, then we'll go into the stone base, and then we'll go into the main deck itself. I don't have a sideboard for this completed yet, but I will talk about a few sideboarding options and maybe some ideas so you guys can take this list going forward and really you know, shape it into the kind of deck that you want to play. So let's get right into it and talk about the ruler first. So up first we have Blazer. Now I know this a lot, a lot of people are like, man, we haven't seen this guy in like six months or however long it's been. Uh, since the first Blazer Knights SKL was September, so infinite time ago. Uh, this is what we thought was going to be the epitome of color fixing, is that all your magic stones can tap and produce for red, which you will see is very relevant, and his judgment cost is zero. Well, that's why he comes into play. You can only do it if they have a J ruler. So he comes in. He's a 10-10. He's hopefully going to make your opponent's J ruler lose all abilities and then die. Horrible, horrible death. He still taps for red, uh, or sorry, your stones still tap for red. And kind of the relevant part here, and I'll get into that too, is that he gains plus 400, plus 400 when he's the only thing on your side of the field. Uh, and when we're playing things like Demon Sword, um, and I thought about adding a couple more, uh, or I should say a third and a couple more, Apollo to the list, just to give him flying. There's some times where out of nowhere you can just set up your turn that you're going to, he's going to be a 1400, 1400, or sorry, he's going to come into play, kill your opponent's J Ruler. Swing out with your resonators, they're not going to, you know, they die or they block, what have you. If they're going to die anyway, sacrifice them to demons or get more damage. And you're going to play Apollo then to give him flying. And then suddenly you're attacking with like a 2,000 damage out of nowhere uh, that, again, has flying. So chances are your opponent's not going to be able to do anything about it. And it can just really surprise a lot of your opponents and just kill them. And then we also play like the bow demon flame combo anyway. So we have a way to make sure that damage gets through. Yes, this is a little bit more narrow, it's not going to happen as often as you may like, but it's still super relevant to cover and to see that it does have that ability to just, you know, suddenly 2k your opponent uh, out of the sky. Now, again, all our stones tap for red, so we're going to get into our stone base. Uh, two stones of light, these effectively become heat rays because we're playing blazer. Um, it allows us to play both our Percival on turn one or a demon flame on turn one thanks to blazer. So light is kind of like the secondary color 
uh, or the color that you want to make sure all your stones are producing since they can all automatically produce red. Uh, speaking about options, since it also produces light, uh, for Moonbreeze Memoria, uh, one, this is just great for the Angel of Wisdom. So if you're playing, and you play two main deck, you would automatically play two more sideboard. If you're going against a red mirror, having your stones being able to tap for the Awakening cost, because uh, you're not always going to see Apollo, is just amazing, and it's going to help you win that match. Um, and again, when all of them are tapping for red anyways, there's literal zero drawback to playing these stones in this deck. And then lastly, because, again, card just insanely too good, we have four Rulers Memoria. Um, we want to play a lot of Regalia in this deck anyways. Um, you know, some decks you're playing Regalia just to play them. But if you're playing like Shion, you want to play obviously Hydra Monica. If you're playing this version of Blazer, you want to play Demon, Fo Demon Flame Bow Combo. So it's not that hard to get the other Regalias that we want in here. So uh, without further ado, we'll get into the Regalia in the main deck. Uh, one of Horn, again, cards just great. And I know this might seem like an odd pick, but this deck really does play more like a big red kind of grindy strategy when you open up with like the Gwains and the Demon Flames and things like that. So there is going to be scenarios where you've used all your Percivals and you want to shuffle them back into your deck, or your bows got destroyed by Harrows, you want to shuffle them back into your deck, things of that nature. And it just gives him more damage, so that's fine as well. One Demon Sword. Um, Probably should be more, but I didn't want to go so regalia heavy, and the other ones I think were more important. And again, we're playing for Percival, so if we see Percival flip the Demon Sword, we kind of just have to take it. Um, and playing one of them is probably good enough. Um, again, if you can fit a second one in there, be my guest. Uh, two Death Scythe. Uh, this is just kind of a no-brainer with Blazer. We don't want them, their J-Ruler to survive. That's kind of the whole, you know, one at one... You know, really good thing about Blazer is the color fixing, and the other really good thing is that he can kill your opponent's J Ruler for zero effectively, and you get a body out of it. Now, when you combo that with Death Scythe, you get to make sure that it dies. There's no possible way that they can save it, um, you know, outside of like wind secluded refuges or what have you, uh, to, you know, blink the effect. But other, other than very few cases, if you play Blazer and you play a Death Scythe, their opponent, your opponent's J Ruler is going to die. So, I think that's just, again, it's more damage as well, so it's kind of just worth the inclusion. Uh, two Apollo. Okay, so this card, oh, this card just really does too much for zero. Um, one, it can pay Awakening costs, so it lets us play our Angel and, you know, basically cheat it for free. And two drop now is a 7-7 seven, seven flyer that kills a dark or fire resonator when it enters. But it also lets us bounce a resonator to our hand and play it again for value. Now when we're playing things like Hera's or Uther's or Lancelot's that can attack again, or even Percival's, if we're really, really in a pinch and need to find a Regalia, we can just bounce it to our hand for free and replay it. Again, this is another one of those things where I kind of wish I had a third one just because of how good it is in the deck, but I think two is fine, and giving Blazer flying, of course, is great as well, so it's probably just going to stay at two. Uh, maybe, again, one more on the sideboard. And then, obviously, the best regalia for this deck, and I'll explain why with the next card, is bow. One, it helps the regalia count. Two, it helps us, you know, move things along in terms of being able to push through damage or destroy additions, additions on resonators if we really have to. But um, again, helps with the ruler's memoria, and it just combos insanely well with four demon flames. Now, this is a combo that we have not seen in a very, very long time, but um, this deck finally brought it back. So the whole combo, if you will, with this deck is, or these two cards, is that if your opponent is attacking or blocking, you first shoot with a bow, deals 400 damage to it. Then you play Demon Flame, which says if it was already dealt damage, destroy it instead. So effectively for one counter, and again, bow gets two, so that's great. And for a very, very low cost of one fire will, you can destroy something of your opponent's. And again, it's great if you're trying to get through damage. It's a very, very cheap way to remove a Resonator. Now again, unfortunately, you can't hit J-Rollers or anything like that, but... That's a much smaller note since, you know, most of the games are going to be won through Resonators anyways, and that's what we want to focus on killing. So again, absolutely great combo, makes it more of the mid rangey kind of strategy feel to it, um, and can do a lot of work in your matches. Uh, the other one drop we play is for Percival. Since this is, you know, a Knights of the Round Table deck, might as well, might as well play for Percivals. Again, this card just does so much when it either protects your J-Rule or protects your Lancelot, protects your Gwains if you're really in a pinch, pr protects your Garrets, which can do absolutely insane things in this deck when he's comboed with Gwain. 
So again, the card is worth playing, and I really, I've always loved this card. Like this is one of my favorite cards when it was previewed. I like the other art better, but you know, I don't have the GP promo, so what have you. Um, first of all, it just has a lot of value. I know it's not, it's not the greatest by itself, and yes, it requires your deck to be built in a certain way, but I think that the advantage that it gives you and the tools that you can build your deck around with, considering the next set, it's going to be worth playing. So I'm very excited to see Blazer Knights hopefully make a comeback uh, with a four. Going into our two drops, we played two Heras. Thanks to the four Rulers of Memorial, we can easily splash this. If our opponent has some bows that are troublesome, we can blow those up. You know, whatever zero cost Regali is threatening us, we can get rid of it. And it draws us a card, which is always a good thing in a more, you know, mid range aggressive deck. Something that gives us a 5-5 five, five body, which, you know, I wish it was a 6-6 six, six body, but oh well. Uh, and then also draws us a card out, enter to replace itself, can be very, very good. Also, we can destroy our own death site, then remove some cards, get value off it that way. Or if our bows are used up with all their counters, we can destroy one of our own bows just so we can shuffle it back into our deck. So, Hera is going to have a target, you know, 99 times out of 100 that's worth destroying. So, it's definitely worth playing if you can fit it in the deck. Two Angel of Wisdom. Again, not much really needs to be said about this card. Destroys Darker Fire, becomes a 7-7 Flyer, which is relevant. And again, if you have Apollo out, it can, if you're on the draw, they play it turn two Lancelot, you play this turn two, and just laugh. Obviously, they can follow up with another Lancelot, what have you, but you get to destroy it and get some kind of value out of destroying their Resonator, which is always great. Uh, speaking of Lancelot, I mean, not much really needs to be said about this card. Um, place four. Card's great. Card's too good. Not balanced whatsoever, but it's a card we have to deal with. Um, hopefully with the next set down the drain, it might, you know, counteract this a little bit, but we will see. Lancelot has Fire Breathing, which means you can pay a red will and give him plus 100 attack. If you bump him up to over 1,000 a thousand attack or more on Declaration of the Attack, he can ping something for 700, which is extremely relevant, it turns out. And when we're playing with Bow, the other thing to think about is if they only have one blocker, let's say your opponent only has a Lucifer in field. You move to attack, you burn it for 700, and then you have a bow in play. So no matter what, I mean, they could block, and I don't know why they might might do that, but then your Lancelot's damage is going to get through because they can't take the damage from the bow. Like, even if they try to block it and they want to somehow get a trade out of it, the bow will just kill them from the 400 damage. So getting to do things like that really makes the 700 damage uh, ping that much stronger. And then this was always one of my favorite cards because of his... Uh, text, not because of his damage, unfortunately. So Gwen gives your other knights the round table, plus 200, plus 200. And what's super awesome about this card, again, it's a 3-7, so it's obviously meant to be more defensive. But whenever he attacks or blocks, you get to tap down something of your, of your opponent's. Now, there was a time, and it was great that I was able to, I mean, I had to attack with Lancelot first, but he was 1,000-1,000, so that was fine. But effectively, what I got to do was attack with Lancelot, and I had two Gwen's on board, and he had three blockers. So attack with Lancelot, whatever happens, Attack with Gwen, top, tap down their second creature, and they have to block the third one or else it's just lethal. And I get attack with the other Gwen and tap something else down. So it's a way that you get to get through damage and exhaust their possible blockers. And then let's say your blazer is the last thing to get through. You know, you're going to be able to kill your opponent and remove their resonators either temporarily or just to get through the damage with the combination of Gwen or Bow and Demon Flame. So there's a lot of things that this deck can be doing. More wonderful, wonderful tutor targets for... No, I keep saying tutor, my apologies. Reveal targets for Percival um, Bedivir. And this card is just absolutely great. Again, I can't stress enough that if you're playing a Shion player and they have an Arthur in their deck and they're going to tutor for that Arthur, you have to find this card to win or you're going to be so far behind if Arthur stays on the table even one turn that you're not coming back. It doesn't matter what you try and do, you're going to die. So being able to play four Percivals into two of these is great because I don't want to have to deal with that Arthur. So that's something that we have to consider and is just absolutely great for the deck. Another amazing card is Gareth. Um, this card is just so good. I mean, it's it's 800-800 target attack, so it's a great way to body your opponent's resonators and you know they might not want to lose them, but it's a way to you know attack them down. And then the thing to think about is, or uh, sorry, also if it takes less than 800 damage, it takes no damage, that's fine. But you have to consider if you play a turn two Gwen and then you play a turn three Gareth, and it's even better if you, you know, Flame King shout it into play, you then have a 1,000-1,000 target attack resonator 
that can freely kill, let's say, their Lucifer if it's in play. They somehow got that off early. And it's a great, great board control option. Now, again, I said that this deck plays on an axis where it's a lot more uh, board. You want to control the board and you want to have your resonators, you know, obviously be big with Gareth's. And you want to be able to control the board with things like Bow and Demon Flame. And Gareth really helps you get there. And the card does a lot in terms of being able to attack. And again, we can find it off, find it off Percival. Now, the card that is uh, obviously not with the theme of the deck, but it's just too good not to play as Keeper of the Past. Um, again, this card really should just say Destroy Target J slash Resonator, simply because of what you're removing with it. Now, again, I know a lot of people are already familiar with this card, so I can move this to the side a little bit. And then when we combo with things like Flame King Shout, and we play uh, three of them, that it allows us to play the card, give it Swiftness, deal 400 damage to all the Resonators, and then we can exile the Flame King Shout to deal 600 damage automatically. So let's say in a world where they've already dealt with our Lancelot, and we're going into our turn three, and let's say they, are, they had an early judgment somehow, what have you. You can Flame King Shout, put an Uther, exiling the Flame King Shout for 600 damage because it doubles it, then exiling the Lancelot for 400 more damage, and you can suddenly kill a Shion out of nowhere that they might not have been expecting. So being able to play this combo I strongly believe if you're playing a red stone base, if it's an aggro deck, if it's a mid-range deck, if maybe we see like a more controlly mid rangey deck that's even more grindy than this one in the future, these six cards should go in that deck 100% every single time until a better combo comes out, strictly because it allows you to, again, deal 400 damage to everything, which can then be relevant if you're trying to swing through with bows, then it's 800 damage total, which is going to kill a lot of the things that they're trying to block with. Or if you're just strictly doing it for the be able to kill something, it's it adds a lot of value to the deck. Yes, it's a two-card combo, you know, but when you're thinking about the other turns that you can do with it or the other plays that you can make, it's it should be an auto include if you can cast these two cards. So I think that combo is great. It is something that we've played for, I mean, maybe as long as it's legal, I won't go that far, but it's gonna be played for a very, very long time. Now, that said, I, again, didn't really have a chance to make a sideboard for this, um, but I will just talk about some cards that are great that you should have in your sideboard. Um, again, Bedivere. This card is just great at killing a lot of things. Again, if they're playing Arthur, I would definitely want a third one in the sideboard. It removes their Seraphs from the game, which are extremely relevant. There's just a lot of things that this card hits right now that you want to get out of the game, and especially if they're on the Necrolands package, um, being able to remove their Lancelots, especially in the next set when they're probably going to be playing the last drop, um, at least as like a one or two of, removing their Lancelots from the game so they can't get it back is going to be extremely relevant. Um, I know one of the lists I saw played Sukunomi Noble, um, and this card is great strictly because it, can, it destroys additions, it can turn off activated abilities of Resonators if they're not playing Moon, and is just a 5-7 body, which is pretty good, or it becomes a 7-9 body, which is obviously even better. That way you can um, block Lancelots if they don't have the Necrolance, or even if they have to like waste their Reflect Pump if they don't have a Necrolance to make it an 8-8, and you can still block favorably and not have to worry about taking the damage. Uh, feels pretty good. Uh, Blessed Holy Wolf is another option. And then just another card I think that would probably be good, since we have the Moon to pay the Awakening effects, um, we can set up our turns where we're playing the Kaguya's Premonition, getting a bunch of counters on like a Lancelot or something, and then just being able to swing, 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 swing with Lancelot for the game. Um, there's a few other cards like Shining Strike, which I put in the Fairies deck, uh, that you might want to play as well. But overall, there's a lot of pretty good options in Light, uh, or again in Fire if you really want to go that way, that will be able to be sideboard cards. Um, obviously, Harrow's 3 and maybe even 4 would be relevant, things of that nature. Maybe if you want another Apollo, if you play more Awakening stuff on the sideboard, is also another option. So, again, this is our bonus video for the week, guys, so that's really all I have. Uh, on these. I don't really have a dedicated sideboard. Maybe sometime down the road I will, but that's all for today. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure to check out GamersGauntlet.net and UltimateGuard.com for all your good TCG needs. Uh, again, Ultimate Guard is just amazing at the products they have. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. It really helps us, you know, get the video out there, get more people in the Force of Will, get more people watching, which is always great. We want more people to be trying these decks. You know, I, I know a lot of people either play Reflect, Necrolance, but there's other decks out there, and that's always been our goal to try to get new ideas out there and give people more options to play with. 
So again, thank you very much for watching, guys, and we'll catch you on the next Six Sages Gaming Deck Spotlight. Have a good one. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit that like button and leave us a comment with what you thought of the video. Don't forget to subscribe to Six Age Gaming and check out some of the deck spotlights, dual series, and force of community videos that are already on the channel. We also have a Facebook and a Twitter, so feel free to find us there. Lastly, if you have a deck that you would like featured in a video, be sure to drop us a comment below. Until next time, take it easy.